Welcome guys and gals and today we are here to talk about a very interesting topic. This news came out recently at the time of this upload, at least I think when I'm going to be uploading this. This news broke yesterday and that is that good old Warner Brothers Discovery, the new name instead of just Warner Brothers. That's going to take a while to get used to, although it doesn't sound as bad as I thought it was going to sound. It kind of does sound nice, but since David Zaslav and his company or you know his team took over that department, there's going to be a lot of change coming to the company. And of course, the main focus is on the DC side of things. Now, I'm just going to put it out there right now that if you don't know already, I am a big DC fan. I mean, I like all comic book stuff, but it's just, you know, I grew up with DC. I have a lot more connections with the characters and whatnot. So that's why I typically gravitate towards DC. So the news has been that, of course, with Zaslav now in charge and, you know, getting his people in there and whatnot is that, Warner Brothers Discovery is potentially exploring an overhaul of DC Entertainment. Now, what all that means, I don't think most of us know yet necessarily, but it's safe to say that uh, they probably looked at what the previous people did and they said, yeah, we need to fix that, which I mean, they, they honestly do. There's no question they need to um, because it's a, it's been a hard time being a DC fan for like the last, you know, what, eight, 10 years, something like that, it's, you know, specifically when it comes to the DCEU because... It has been hit or miss to put it nicely. So basically from what I've gathered, of course, they're, you know, they want some new people in charge. And um, and this doesn't just revolve around the movies either. I mean, the movies obviously is a huge part of it, but they're also wanting to get more streaming content because I've heard that before Sazlav even got in charge anyways, was that he's really interested in the streaming content. So he's going to put a lot of focus into that. And... They also want to bolster the DC video games, meaning, of course, make more DC video games. Because at this point in time, the only DC video games in the future that I'm aware of, unless I'm forgetting one, are Gotham Knights, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and Wonder Woman. So they apparently want to get more games out there. It's like, come on, the world wants a Superman game. Give them a Superman game. It's like, don't say it's impossible when there was that Unreal Engine 5 or 6, whatever number it was, that simulation where it was literally Superman, pretty much. The gameplay was so it's like don't say a superman game is impossible but i'm all down for them making more dc video games and so yeah and this is the article from variety and the new owners of all things batman superman and wonder woman are exploring an overhaul of dc entertainment multiple sources close to the situation told variety so this is where it gets kind of complicated because dc is kind of in a weird place right now because it's this is just shows you how bad the last uh, group of folks treated this um, brand because you basically have like two or three different factions of you know quote DC fans out there okay so you have people who are like only interested in the Matt Reeves universe which I absolutely love that universe and I can't wait to see more and I'm sure they're going to do a sequel um, you have people who of course want the Snyderverse and whatnot and then you have people who say they're real DC fans and don't want anything to do with the Snyderverse it's just it's a mess it is absolutely a mess and then that's just shows you how terribly the past regime handled dc so it's honestly one of those things where you could have the best of you know all those worlds and just give all of them all the people all of that stuff like you could have the snyderverse be one be its own thing then you, you can you can have the matt reeves universe and then you can have your still dceu or whatever they can all be their own separate things i know it could get a little confusing but that would please all of the fans now if you want my quick opinion on the Snyderverse, if I think it should happen, maybe. I mean, if I have to say yes or no, then I'd say yes. But I just, I don't know. It's just a little bit tricky. I definitely want more Justice League movies, but it's just, I don't know if that's going to happen. I hope it does. But, you know, I just, I don't know, man. There's just so much toxic fan, you know, fans out there. And it's like, so I'll say, yes, I want it, but I'm still a little hesitant on it. I'm way more interested in the whole Matt Reeves Batman universe right now, but that's because I'm a huge Batman fan, so I'm a little biased. But I want to see way more of that. But, of course, I would love to see more Justice League movies and whatnot. So, of course, let's go ahead and get into the other topics of this discussion. So I pretty much already, you know, talked about this, but that is, of course, the overhaul of DC Entertainment. And so I'm just going to quickly go over this again. And once again, that's pretty much everything you know they're talking about the movies you know tv shows streaming video games all that stuff they basically 
want to bolster all of that stuff. Now, once again, we don't know exactly what they're going to do, but it's sounding good right now. But, you know, sometimes companies do this when they have new people come in. They'll say all these nice things to get fans excited and then, you know, uh, things don't go very well. So when it comes to the movies, I don't know exactly what that's going to mean, if they will kind of have separate things going on or if they will try to do a whole connected universe again. Me personally... I feel like they should just give up on that. I feel like DC is at its strongest when they just kind of have their own separate, you know, worlds or whatever you want to say. You know, just like the Batman, for example, that was its own little world or whatever, and that's why it was successful. So I personally think they should do more of that instead of trying to do a shared universe and whatnot. So, but, you know, if they can find somebody who can, you know, steer the boat or whatever you want to say and make it successful, then by all means, I'm for it. But so far... They only had a little bit of that when the DCEU first started, but then it just it went way downhill after that. It's been all over the place since then. Um, TV shows, I'm sure they're going to want to make more TV shows. Uh, video games, they want to bolster video games, which I'm all for that. You know, make a third Injustice game, make a Superman game, make a Justice League game, whatever. So just wanted to quickly go over that again. Now, this is where it starts to get a little interesting, and that is because... Continuing with the article, it says, Before the merger closed, Zaslav vetted candidates with experience in creating and nurturing blockbuster intellectual property with a goal of potentially finding someone to serve as a creative and strategic czar similar to what Marvel has in Kevin Feige. Sorry if I said that last name wrong because I feel like I always do it. It's either Feige or Feig or something like that. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. But of course, what Kevin Feige has accomplished with the MCU is astounding. Like, honestly, it is. Now, not all those movies are for me, but I will fully admit that, of course, what he accomplished, he and his team accomplished over there is astounding, and who would have honestly thought? I mean, it sounded like a tall task, but they did it brilliantly. And now why this gets interesting is because now this is starting this whole debate on, well, who should be this Kevin Feig, Feig figure? I'm just going to keep calling him Kevin from now on so I don't mispronounce the last name. Who's going to be this Kevin figure for DC? This is how, you know, this has started a whole debate about who it should be. Now, I mean, I'm thinking off the top of my head, I would want somebody who knows DC really well, but also, um, God, I mean, this is tough because like when you bring up somebody like Jeff Johns, which I'm not a fan of him anymore because of how much he's screwed up so many live action DC stuff. But with Jeff Johns, of course, he's somebody who has a lot of experience with DC, but he just, you know, he screwed up a lot of the live action DC movies. Um, but you know, I would think of somebody like Jim Lee would possibly, you know, or uh, Jay Olivia or Liva, however you say his last name. I'm sorry I'm pronouncing these dudes' names wrong, but you know, I would kind of want somebody along those lines. I know there's the crowd that wants Zack Snyder. The only reason I would say yes to that is like, don't get me wrong, I like most, not all, I like most of his ideas and his planning because once again, they did have a plan early on for the DCEU, but then once they got the reception from BVS and whatnot, WB went full panic mode and then just it just was a mess after that. So they did have a plan early on. So I'm not blaming Snyder 100% for that. I'm just saying, you know, WB kind of, you know, crapped the bed, but they did have a plan early on, and don't get me wrong, of course, Snyder does have, you know, good plans and whatnot, because, for example, one of the things is, like, it seems like they keep teasing, like, the Injustice story, because they teased it a little bit in BVS for a small sequence, and then once again, they did it in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now, to me, if they ever do make an Injustice live-action movie, that better be way, and I mean way down the line. That would want to be DC's equivalent to, like, Infinity War Endgame. That would be the movie you'd want to build up to. So after multiple solo movies, Justice League movies, blah, 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 introducing a bazillion characters, then you better do Injustice because Injustice involves a lot of characters, so you better build up to that. That I would love if they built up to Injustice. That would be amazing to see in live action. So, But honestly, yeah, I honestly don't know who would be a good person to be this figure. Um because like I said, I haven't looked too much into it, but off the top of my head, I would hope somebody like Jim Lee or just somebody who's well-renowned in the DC world. But then again, you know, Jeff Johns was as well, but then he kind of effed up a lot of things. So I don't know. I do not see them giving it to Snyder. Like the, they'll maybe give him that privilege or job, whatever you want to say, when if he gets to do his own little universe, then yeah, they'll probably have him do that. But I don't see them giving him full creative control over all things DC. They're probably going to want somebody completely different. So I don't know who that will be, but I'm kind of hoping for somebody like Jim Lee. 
Now, one of the things that Warner Brothers Discovery has, you know, talked about, you know, according to insiders, is of course how before the whole DC universe, and I'm assuming they're mostly referring, I mean, maybe they're referring to it overall, just DC, but I think it's mostly the DCEU. And they talked about how there was a lack of strategy or a coherent plan and whatnot, which it's like, no duh. They had like, once again, I know I said this earlier, but they had a little plan early on, but then after the reception of BVS or whatever, Warner Brothers just, you know, crapped the bed and it just became, it almost felt like every other movie was a soft reboot, basically is what it became. So they had a plan early on, but then that just quickly went away. And then it was just basically everybody do their own thing. You know, yeah, sure. Mention a few things that, oh yeah, sure. They're connected, but you know, nothing really bigger going on. Right. So because it was safe to say before that the people who were in charge, yeah, they did not have a plan. And that is why it's a good thing to see these people get, I mean, you don't want to see really anybody lose their job, but it's like, they'll find a job somewhere else, I'm sure. But when you had people like Ann Sarnoff and um, Jason Kylar, Kilar, something like that, it's like, they're gone. So far, Toby Emmerich has his job and Walter Hamada have has his job, which is shocking to me. But, and that's the that's the one minor thing I'm a little concerned about is because according to that article, it said how, I don't know if it was Zaslav or just the people from Warner Brothers Discovery saying how Emmerich and Za or not Zaslav, but Emmerich and Hamada work, made consistently good movies or produced consistently good movies. I'm like, I don't know about that. Or at least successful, I should say. It's like, I don't know about that. So that's the only part I'm a little concerned about. I am not a fan for sure of Toby Emmerich, but because it seems like ever since he got in charge, he has just destroyed Warner Brothers. But Hamada, I I don't follow him too much. I know why people are upset with him, but it's like I don't follow him so much to really know if I like or dislike him. But I definitely know like I dislike Toby Emmerich for sure because how they handled Zack Snyder when he's filming Justice League after the um, passing of his daughter and whatnot. That was just 100% disgraceful. And I like... Hate is not a word I throw out often, but I hate for how he handled that situation. So, but hopefully they will have a clear strategy moving forward. And that is why they want this Kevin-like figure so that they can have a clear strategy and build a plan for what they want to do in this universe. And hopefully whoever they find, they know what they're doing and they know how to treat these characters with respect and know how to connect these universes. Because it's like, all you have to do is look at the DC animated movie universe. You can say whether or not you like or dislike those movies, but you can't deny that it's like that is basically the template that right there. It's right there. It's like just follow that and there you go. That's all it really takes because I know not everybody loves all of the DC animated movie universe movies, but you can't deny that they did really well about, you know, kind of connecting them all together and whatnot. So it's like there's your template, just follow that. So yeah, I don't know. I just really hope they do have some clear planning going forward because it has just been a mess, especially like the last five, six years. So yeah, find somebody good. So continuing on with this article and this next part, I think is what gets a lot of people excited. So this is just after the part of them saying how they lack a strategy and whatnot and how they had films like Aquaman and the Batman be successes, but it still lacks the coherent creative and brand strategy. So that was the last part. But Right after that, it's about how Discovery also believes that several top shelf characters such as Superman need to be revitalized and that they've been left to languish. And that, guys and gals, this is, I think this is my biggest takeaway in this whole thing right now. And I just want to say, if this is all true to Warner Brothers Discovery, thank you. Thank you so much because, like, I think everybody can agree that Superman has been treated like basically crap, you know, honestly. I mean, yes, he's got this, you have the Superman and Lois TV show, which I've heard is good. I haven't seen it, but I've heard that that's pretty good. So that's great. But I mean, when you're talking about like the big budget movies, like they have dis disrespected Superman so much. And it's just a character like that who's arguably the greatest superhero in history. Like, of course, I'm going to say Batman's the greatest, but a lot of people will say it's Superman. But I know when it comes down to it, if it weren't for Superman, we wouldn't have a lot of the heroes today. Superman was the one who started it all. So how can you have arguably the greatest superhero of all time and just continually, continually disrespect him like they have? Now, as I said, pretty much the only saving grace that there has been is the Superman and Lois TV show. And then 
you have somebody like Henry Cavill who literally looks like the epitome of Superman. Like he is the living embodiment of Superman and they just could not utilize him properly. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not disrespecting on how Snyder handled him 100% of the time, but it's like, I'm okay if you wanted him to be dark and gloomy at first, but it's like, I was kind of getting over that real quick. It's like, I, a lot of people want him to be, you know, the hope, you know, the light and whatnot, instead of just the depressed and whatnot. Like, I understand why he wanted to be like that, but Superman also needs to be the shining light of hope and everything. And it's like, it's just so depressing how much Warner Brothers, at least when it comes to the big budget movies, they have just neglected Superman. The fact that you had the living image of Superman and he only had one solo movie, just one, is just astounding to me. Because I know he's made appearances in three movies, but he's only had one solo movie when he, I think he honestly deserved a trilogy. So, so hopefully that means now, here's the thing. So when it comes to Superman, I really hope they keep Henry Cavill, at least if he wants to do the job. If he doesn't want to do it, then hey, that's up to the actor. If he doesn't want to do it, then fine. But if he wants to do it, which I think he still does, please bring him back because he is perfect for Superman and he deserves to have his own movies. And it would be absolutely amazing if they gave him some more. Now, I know this is the part where it gets divisive again because then you're going to have the people who want, oh, they want Snyder to come back so he can finish the Man of Steel trilogy and his story arc, blah, 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 blah. But then you're also going to have the other side and this is why it's just it's so divisive within the DC fan base because then you're going to want the other side who wants somebody new at the helm some new creative minds and whatnot and basically want a different not a completely different take but at least a little bit of a different take on Superman all I'm going to say is that if they do make another Superman movie which I mean they should then I hope the villain is either Brainiac or Metallo I, I mean Metallo is not really a necessarily a big bad I see him as more of a side villain but you can do both I guess just enough of Lex Luthor he's the equivalent of Joker to Batman you know he's just overused a lot and I know there's this talk about um the making a Superman movie with an African-American and it's like okay and then that starts the whole debate about well it's like because supposedly he's going to be Clark Kent or the other character I'm blanking on the character's name but there is an African-American Superman so I'm sorry but it's like yeah do that character it's like don't like, sorry if I get a little political here for a second, but don't race swap somebody to be Clark Kent. It's like, do the other guy who is an African-American Superman in the comics. I'm blanking on his name at this point, but it's like, he's an interesting character as well. So just do that. So I really hope that they do bring back Superman because he is definitely a character that WB has mishandled quite a bit. Another big one is Green Lantern. And that gets to the whole thing about other characters. They also believe that other big name characters need to be revitalized all of the big ticket ones so it's like that's the thing is green lantern's another big one now i've never been the biggest green lantern fan although i will agree that i feel like the whole green lantern core concept and all of that is probably some of the most interesting stuff in dc but it's just i've never really got hooked on it but i, I understand why there's a huge fan base for it and there to me there's a lot of big characters out there from dc that need to have some big outings and whatnot because of course we need superman to come back you know we need to have green lantern teen titans legion of superheroes and just you know all that stuff and it's like there's so many big name dc brands that it's like how have they not made any movies for them yet or anything so i definitely think that superman does need to be revitalized and i'm very glad that um, warner brothers discovery has said that and i know that gives a lot of fans hope so hopefully that does mean that they will bring Superman back, especially if it's Henry Cavill, once again, if he wants to do it. And hopefully he can get a trilogy because he deserves it. Once again, I know I sound like a broken record, but he is literally the living embodiment of Superman. You just look at the dude, it's like, that is 100% Superman. So, of course, let me know what you think about this part, if you think this is a really good step forward. And are there any other dc big name dc characters that you think deserve to have a, like a movie adaptation or i guess you could say tv shows as well so earlier we were just talking about how they want to revitalize big ticket characters so now this is kind of the i mean i wouldn't say it's the opposite but it's um not the big ticket characters necessarily but the 
article continues on. Variety says that, quote, Discovery insiders believe that projects like Todd Phillips' Joker are a shining example of how second build characters from the DC library can be exploited. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn was another opportunity, though Birds of Prey missed the mark. End quote. So basically, they're also looking for more movies in like Joker and Birds of Prey. Uh, this is where it gets a little confusing because, first of all, they said they wanted there to be like a, you know, a clear strategy and plan and do a, possibly do a shared universe and whatnot. But yet they want more movies like Joker and Birds of Prey because Joker was its own thing. Um, and then Birds of Prey, it's like, sure, it was DCEU, but it's like, it didn't really feel like it. There were just minor references to other movies, but it's like, it still felt like its own thing. So, I mean, I understand what they're saying, though. Like, I can see making more, like, I guess you could say character study movies or making movies focused on, as they put it, you know, second build characters and, you know, ones that aren't, I mean, I love how they say Joker is a character like that, even though Joker is arguably the best villain in comics history, but... It's like, I can understand what they're saying, how they want, you know, some lesser known characters or ones that don't get the spotlight nearly as much to get more movies and whatnot. So that I can agree with. So I guess you could say like Blue Beetle, Batgirl, you know, things like that. I think those kind of lean more towards that. Um, but yeah, I'm all for that because there's some minor characters that I feel like definitely deserve some, uh, deserve the spotlight. You know, you have like the question, Captain Adam and many more, you know, Mr. Terrific, you know, things like I would love to see those guys in live action and it's just yeah i i don't know it's just it's very confusing because like i said they kind of want to do this whole you know clear strategy and plan and possible universe but then yet they want more movies like joker and birds of prey now my quick opinion on both of those movies i for one i like joker but it's like at the same time it didn't really feel like the character if you know what i mean because i understand that criticism that it's like well it's not the Joker. It's just some guy who, some random guy that just puts on that makeup and then he just claims to be the Joker. It's like, I get that. It doesn't really feel like the comics Joker, if you know what I mean. But I still thought it was a good movie. I know it's not for everybody because some people don't like that super serious, dark, and whatnot movie. But I liked it. Now, Birds of Prey, this is the interesting one because for me, Birds of Prey, I actually enjoyed it. I, I mean, I don't love it, but I do like it. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Um, I don't like how they treated certain characters, I will say that, but most namely like Black Mask, well, especially how he went out, but um, Cassandra Cain, Huntress, I kind of felt like needed more time and same as Black Canary, because those characters, I mean, honestly, it was just a Harley Quinn movie. It's like, I don't know why they call it Birds of Prey, because it's literally a Harley Quinn movie, you know, featuring Birds of Prey on the side. So uh, I would love to see more of Huntress and Black Canary. So... Who knows? But yeah, it's like for me, I did enjoy that movie, but it's just I didn't like how they treated certain characters, especially like Cassandra Kane. So I'm not somebody who hates it. So it's like, I don't know. I, I'm not totally against them making more movies like you know Joker or Birds of Prey and whatnot. I would honestly love it, though, if they did make more movies that are focused on villains, because I feel like that could be a huge thing because you had like the first i mean i don't know if you can say it was the first movie but one of the movies to kind of start it was the original suicide squad because you know they're supposedly villains or anti-heroes whatever you want to say and i think that's why a lot of people were hyped for it because it was something different because i mean maybe there was a few before that but that's what really kicked it off about there being you know villain movies and i think you know sure everybody loves superhero movies we love the heroes but we also want to see takes on villains. So that's why when you had like Suicide Squad, they had a cast of, you know, villains, even if you felt like they weren't villains, whatever you want to say. But then you had like Joker, you have like Venom from Marvel, however you feel about those movies. It's like people are interested in those movies because they deal with the villains. So I would personally, I would love to see more movies that are focused on villains. I know that can be kind of tricky to do, but it's like, I would just love more character studies on villains. So because I, I guess when it comes to Black Adam, it's like, I, I know he's not always 100% a villain. I know, I think in most cases, he's an anti-hero. But he can be a villain sometimes. So it's like, that's kind of another case where it's sort of a villain, but not really. So I would be way more open to them doing more like character studies for DC villains. And more solo projects like that. But at the same time, they want to do a whole universe, I'm sure. So I don't know. I just could see this getting very confusing. So in conclusion, wanted to give my final thoughts on this whole thing. It's like, 
the future does look bright, at least for now. But as I've said before, it's just one of those things where when you have these new people come in, they'll say all these things to get fans excited and whatnot, and then they could just completely just backtrack and just do stuff that piss people off. So, but when it comes to all this overall stuff, I am pretty excited. Um, it's just, I am very curious about what they're going to do with this, you know, alleged overhaul of DC Entertainment. So, because once again, it's like there could literally be like three different roles. There could be the Matt Reeves universe, Batverse, whatever you want to say. You could have the DCEU, and then you could have like the Snyderverse. It's just there could be so many different routes that this could go. It could get a little confusing, but yeah, I'm definitely, I definitely like seeing that they're they want to put a lot more effort into their DC project projects and whatnot. So I guess that's promising. But once again, hopefully it's actually going to be a good thing. Um. And then the whole thing about finding somebody like Kevin Feige, it's like, please find somebody good. It's like, I'm sure it's not going to be as easy as it sounds because I know a lot of people throw out names like I just threw out Jim Lee. It's like, I don't even know if he'd be good at it. It's just since he's been around with DC for a long time and whatnot, I thought maybe he'd be a solid choice. But it's just, once again, what Kevin Feige has accomplished has been very impressive. And it's just, I I don't know if they'll find somebody to that level, you know. So I, I hope they do because that'd be great. But it's just, I kind of have a hard time believing that. And then the fact that they definitely believe a character, especially Superman, needs to be revitalized. 100% agree with that. As I said, that's the probably one of the most exciting things about this whole article and how they also believe a lot of other big ticket DC characters need to be revitalized and whatnot. It's like 100%. There's a lot of big characters that deserve to have their show and whatnot. And then they also want more things like Joker and Birds of Prey. It's like that's the one I'm kind of iffy on, but I guess we'll see. So... I am very interested to see where this goes because, of course, as I as I stated before, I am a, a DC fan. Um, I just hope they get a clear direction with the whole with all the movies and whatnot. TV shows, most of the TV shows they have right now, besides I guess you, you could say the CW, excluding um, Superman and Lois, um, aren't very good. So hopefully they kind of get that fixed. But like all the other DC shows, you know, especially on like HBO Max and whatnot. So when it comes to like peacemaker doom patrol things like that those have done really well titans is kind of meh and whatnot so but still it's probably better than what's on the cw excluding superman and lois and then when it comes to the video game departments of course i love the dc video games i absolutely adore the arkham series i love the injustice games and whatnot so i can't wait to see what they're going to do with that hopefully they will make that superman game that everybody's been wanting for a really long time i don't know if that's going to happen but hopefully it does so the future looks promising as of right now. Everybody's going to keep debating about who should be the Kevin Feige figure and and whatnot and about what DC projects we should get next and everything. It's just, yeah, it's all very exciting right now. I'm sure it's still going to be a while before all this stuff gets figured out. It's going to be a while, but as of right now, I am pretty excited. I can't wait to see where this goes. I want to see more of the Matt Reeves Bat Universe, which we're already getting like two spin-off shows on HBO Max, and I'm sure he'll get his trilogy or whatever. So I can't wait for that. I would I guess I would say yes, I want to see the Snyderverse, but it's just, you know, kind of I at least want to see the other Justice League movies. I at least want to see that for sure. And then when it comes to the DCEU, I really and I mean really want them to to see them add characters or, you know, DC brands like the Legion of Superheroes, Teen Titans, Constantine, Zatanna, Green Arrow, you know, people like that. I want to see those characters, Captain Adam, Mr. Terrific. I could just go off on a long speech about all the characters I want to see on the big screen or whatever. So, but of course, those are my final thoughts. Let me know what you think about this whole thing in the comments below. And of course, as always, I would love to see you all next time. So